The Federal High Court in Abuja has reinstated Julius Abure as the national chairman of the Labour Party. The court upheld the validity of the party's 2024 national convention held in Newi, where Abure was re-elected. Justice Emeka Wite ruled that the convention adhered to all legal procedures and directed the Independent National Electoral Commission to recognize Abure's leadership. This decision comes after INEC had previously refused to acknowledge Abure claiming that the March 2024 convention violated the Nigerian constitution and the Electoral Act. However, the court's ruling now affirms Abure as the legitimate leader of the Labour Party. Let's discuss this now with the help of a lawyer and a member of the Labour Party, Monday Mawa. Monday, thank you for giving us your time. Let's just kick off with this new ruling. On the one hand, INEG initially was against um, recognizing him. Now the court has mandated. Uh, what is the validity of this ruling now and how will it impact um, events in the Labour Party going forward? Well, thank you. Uh The point is that it's not even a ruling, it's a judgment for the court. And the implication of that is, is a confirmation to what some of us we've been saying for quite some time now. I remember, I think a couple of weeks ago, I was in this program and I told them that there are the leader, the, the Labour Party is mad with so much faction. However, despite those factions, that that of Aburi seem to be more in tune now with the law because the the anchor person asked me that as at the moment who is the who is the leader of labor party and i told him abure sadly sadly in the sense that i'm not in support of abure but for the fact that abure managed to conduct a convention that convention in the eye of the law remains valid until set aside that was what i my position a couple of weeks ago and which position the court has stamped today. The truth is this, I think I next seem to be overrating itself. And I, with the greater respect, there are fine lawyers in INEC in their legal department. What I want to presume is, the, is that, is it that the, those in the political department of INEC don't seek advice from the legal department or they all, they, 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 they give advice and they normally refuse to abide by the advice. Because I know by the elect the tenant of electoral art is only an observer in any party activities. Yes, the electoral art, every political party for any of its meeting has a duty to notify INEC, not give INEC a notice of not less than 21 days. Now, but have you given INEC that notice of 21 days? Whether INEC now decide to attend or not is exclusively at their discretion. So no political party now has the power to now begin to put rope around INEC, the neck of the INEC officials, and begin to drag them in to attend their political meetings. So okay. what, shall we call the, the, the argument of INEC over the period has been that, oh, the neck, the convention held by a bully led fashion in any way, we, we did not attend. And so because we did not attend, it is not valid. Okay, I mean, are you are you expecting a response? Misinterpretation from, of the law. Are you will you be expecting a response from INEG or further litigation uh, from other members of the party? Definitely. INEC will go to court. Unfortunately. My advice for them is that if they decide to go to court, they are going to waste their money. Not just their money, they are going to waste taxpayers' money because first, they are acting as busybody in this case. What why am I why do I call them a why do I call them busybody? The issue that borders on Labour Party is not does not consign INEC. INEC is only an umpire. Now, but what they now do these days is that. When they see that there's one big figure in the other side, they tend to sway their way to the other side. The position with INEC is that, oh, Peter Obi did not attend the convention. Stakeholders did not, they, they, the stakeholder did not attend the convention. That is not the business of anybody. Peter Obi is not the Labour Party. And so, 
as long as I, the Aburi led faction, which I'm also fighting against, gave notice, the duly notice to INEC, the convention remained valid, and INEC has no power to say we can, we are not going to recognize it. All and right, before I talk about uh, stakeholders, I'm um, sorry, uh, before I talk about the stakeholders of the party, maybe the Kataka committee, I'd like you to, for a lot of people, I'm asking you this because you're a member of the Labour Party as well as a legal practitioner. Uh, could you demystify the maze that is Labour Party faction for us, if you can, in maybe a minute? Which faction is which? Who leads which? Because as it is, there is, you know, very <laughs> huge confusion as to what constitutes a Labour Party leadership today in Nigeria? Sincerely speaking, you are correct. If anybody, if any, any the Labour Party today is like a, a, a this what we call this beans, a cake beans or what they are, Akara, the, the local part, they call it Akara. Once you drop it into the oil, it's scattered to different direction. Labour Party is like that today. Now, first, we have the Julius Aburi led fashion. Then we have the Lamidi, a papa led fashion. Then not too long ago, we had about another man, one Mr. Kalitu Sokafo, who is now so claim, claim that he's the authentic national chairman of the Labour Party. The fashion is there. And while that was ongoing, the Nigerian Labour Congress surprisingly came up one, woke up one morning and said they are going to take over their party. Strangely, because that is the first time I'll be hearing that a Nigerian Labour Congress will be saying that they are the owner of a political party that is already registered, contrary to the to all known law that deals with registration of an organization. But I don't want to go into that. Now, they set up what they call the Ketika, I think, uh, National Transition Committee, NTC. That one is there. Why that was still ongoing, Peter Obi, certainly Peter Obi, the presidential candidate of our party for the 2023 election, and the, the governor of uh, Abia State, Mr. Uh, Alex Oti, con convoked a meeting in Abia State. And from that meeting, they set up another one, which they call Ketika Committee, that was that is headed or to be headed by Senator Nenadi. And I argued. That at this point, my dear, we are having more than five fashion in Labour Party. But all I expected from the beginning was that every one of us would have come to a round table to discuss. But because of the is selfish that, is interest that a possibility of that can happen, be, uh, considering you, where you are at now, in 30 seconds, I'm told we are out of time for this conversation. But is a round table dialogue possible at this juncture in Labour Party life? It is possible. That is, we must learn to submit ourselves to constituted authority, no matter how highly placed you are. Nobody is bigger than the condition of the Labour Party. So we must put aside our ego, whether you're a former presidential candidate, you're a governorship candidate, or whatever. We are all equal before the law. As far as Labour Party constitution is concerned, every member has a stake. All right, Monday, we'll and have they to must all be given that now. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you for having me.